Welcome, I'm Grotbert from the Small Fish Development Team and this is episode 1 of the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide. If you haven't watched episode 0, we explained how to export and import assets, which you won't be needing, as in the description of each episode I will be providing a link for the download of the files we'll be using. So go ahead and download them. Before starting, always check for a pinned comment for any correction, as Sandbox is prone to breaking changes. If you don't already have a project set up, we'll create a new one real quick. We will call this Player Model. Then for the location, you can pick out any folder and not just inside Sandbox, which is very convenient. I suggest creating it inside of a Projects folder on your desktop. I named mine Add-ons because that's what they were called when I first started. Now go ahead and create. This is going to take a while. So while that's loading, let's head over to the folder. Go to Assets. This is where you put your maps, models, materials, etc. So create a models folder. Then create a player folder inside of it. It's good practice to have a separate folder for each model. Now drop all of the assets you downloaded into this folder. Personally, I also like to add a materials folder for the materials texture. And also an animations folder for the animations. It can become very crowded when you have a complex model. Now move all of the images into the material folder and the idle animation in the animations. If we open up our project, we can see all of the assets have appeared in the asset browser. If you only see folders, it means you are in the folder view. You can switch it out over here on the top right to flat view, which will allow you to see all the assets in your folders. And for reasons I'll give later, the model is chopped up in separate files despite using FPX. The first step will be to open model doc, the model editor. You can find it on the left over here, along with all of the other tools. If you open it out, you can see that it's empty. To create a model, you first need to save. Go to File, Save, and you can pick out a name and a path file, but we will not be doing that, so close out of model doc, right click the FBX file, and then select Create Model. This will prompt you to give the model a name. Just player will do. Hit save, and now a new model has appeared in the asset browser. If we double click on it, you will open it in model doc. And as you can see, it has already been set up for us. This method is very useful for creating models in mass, as it automatically fills in a couple of stuff, including the path file. If this is your first time in model doc, I will give you a quick rundown. In the center, we can see the viewport where you can preview your model. Hold right click to take control of the camera. Use WASD to move around and if instead you hold control and right click, you will rotate the model, which is useful to get a different lighting. Hold SHIFT and right click to move the camera up to side. And finally, ALT and right click to move in and out. On the top, you are given many options. I suggest you explore them on your own time, but I will go over a few important ones. The first is the camera view. Here you can switch between perspective and orthographic view. The light bulb is the lighting mode, where you can preview your model under different light conditions. We'll skip this one. Hard display is pretty useful for the rendering info. Mesh display can be used to see the wireframe. We we'll skip over these two. Ground options control the platform your model is on. You can also reset your model's rotation. And finally, Skeleton allows you to look at your model's bones and connections. Here on the right is the outliner. It shows everything your model has, although it's only really useful to switch out the bone and body group and materials. At the bottom, there are a few gizmos we'll go over later. And finally, on the left is the node viewer. The node viewer is where the magic happens. As you can see, we already have two nodes, a render mesh file and a default material group, to render your model and materials respectively. So currently, we only have a floating head, so let's get all of the other parts together. We can do that by pressing this giant add button. This will bring up the full node list. It comes with a short description on the right. I do recommend reading this, 
they can be quite insightful and sometimes they are the only piece of documentation we have for what the nodes do. We can search for nodes up here on the search field, but luckily what we need is already down here. Add meshes with a little wand icon, this means it's a wizard node, and yes, that's the actual name for it. Shrimply put, wizards are either incredibly useful nodes or operations that save you a lot of time. Most of these may be deprecated though. Moving on, close out of the search, we'll be adding our meshes through the little star icon instead. If you press it, you are presented with a short drop down list of the most commonly used nodes, or at least what Valve thinks the most commonly used nodes are. Press add meshes, select the missing meshes holding control, and now press open. Hit compile, and there it is in its full glory. All it's missing is the material. Currently, it's set to the default white. We'll have to create a material first. Tab out of model dock. Like before, on the left you can find the material editor. Open it, and at first you only have the option to create a new material. Press the little plus icon, and now you see many new options have popped up, and many fields to fill. So instead of filling them manually, we'll close out the material editor and right click the color texture instead. Select create material, the name is already fine, so press save, and now we see our material has been created. If we open it, we see the fields have been filled out automatically. But how does it know which textures to use? Well, if you use certain suffixes, Sandbox will automatically fetch the textures and fill the fields for you. As you can see, the color texture uses underscore color, while the normal texture uses underscore normal, and so on. On the screen is the list of suffixes Sandbox recognizes. This also applies to the automatic create model we used earlier, however we didn't need any field filled out there. In the description I will leave a link to the wiki page so you can see for yourself what gets fetched on creation. Finally, check the box for specular, under PBR. This will give better lighting and allows you to use many PBR features. The model has become slightly shinier, so let's change the roughness. We'll have to use the slider, which is used for black and white textures. For color textures instead, you have the option to use a color wheel. The higher the roughness, the less shiny it becomes. I say about 0.6 is good, close enough. Save with Ctrl S, and you can close out now. What the fish? Why is it only viewing the materials now? Whatever. Press the project over here to go back to the view for all of the assets. Now, let's go back to the model in the editor. You can now select the default material group and go into the node editor. That being the small window on the side, you could manually type the path over here in the search, or you can just press the magnifier icon. Now this search tool can be a little annoying since it doesn't clear your last search, so you will have to select your project over here on the left like we did before. We currently only have one material, so select that, and now if you compile, we have the material. I'll also stop saying to compile every time there's a change, just assume I hit compile every change. Our player is looking a little stiff at the moment, he could use an animation. Go ahead and press the star icon again, select add simple animation. From the animations folder, select idle. And since it's a wizard, you will be asked if you want some fields filled out for you. In this case, it recognized idle in the name, so it will ask you if you want it to loop. Select yes, and I guess now is a good time to explain the rest of the model dock interface. Down here you have the animation controllers. Here be the play button, you can also use a spacebar. Next frame, previous frame, first frame, last frame, looping, then force bind pose. This lets you see the model's typos, ignoring any animation you got going. Let's just skip these two for now, and here is the playback speed. Down here, if I pull this up, you can select the animation you're previewing and even blend them together, which I guess could be of some use, but it's much faster to just select the animations directly from the node viewer, so I usually lower this whole section to make the viewport slightly larger. 
On the left here are displayed the frames. If you hit play, you can see the animation looping. I don't like how fast this guy is idling. To slow down the animation, you can change the frame rate in the node editor. The default is 24 frames per second. Let's halve that to 12. Much better. He sure is looking lively. Lastly, let's do something fun. At the very bottom of model dock, we can switch out the animation controls. Animation details is kind of useless, so you can delete it if you want, but if you really want it, you can add stuff back up here in the view. Next is the Morph Explorer, and if we pull it up, we can see we only have one morph. Morphs are a type of animation that uses the mesh instead of the bones, although its morph can only store a shrimp or linear movement of the vertex. It is very performance friendly and allows for some nice details. Usually they are used for facial expression and lip sync, but in our game it will be used as a weight slider in the character creation. You can preview the morph directly here in the Morph Explorer, press enable manual slider control, referring to the slider down here, and if we move it around, you can see that nothing is happening. That's because a morph requires at least two things. First is an animation, which we do currently have, as morphs are actually animation driven, which is why turning off the manual slider says allow animations to drive sliders. If you want to export morph animations, you will also have to export the mesh, and not just the armature. And secondly, the material must support them. If you go back to our material, we see a morph supported checkbox. By default, it's off, so check the box, save the material, and let's see our model now. Enable manual slider control and wow wow wow. Now press back the allow animations to drive sliders as we will do just that. I may not have provided any file for the morph animations but we can still add them. Add a new node and search for morph. Down here we have morph frames with a star icon for some reason. Select it and give it a name. Usually you don't name them, but some nodes are name sensitive. We'll name this Thin. Next, copy and paste the node. Remember to paste them in the animation section. If we paste them in the wrong section, like the render mesh list for example, you will get an error. Now rename this to Fat and turn the slider to 1. If we hit compile and switch between the two, you can see the slider moving around. I think the value is inverted for some reason. This must be a bug. I make sure to report it to the authorities. Speaking of bugs, the reason the model came into separate files was because of one. Issue number 2752. An FBX file with multiple meshes and morphs will discard all the bones for all but one mesh. Of course, Sandbox is still in development, so I hope that by the time you're watching this, the bug will have been fixed, although I'm not counting on that since the issue is a couple of years old. With that said, tune in to next episode to learn how to make a ragdoll.